tonight. How many is ready for revival? We're ready. Amen. We want to welcome each and every one of you. And uh, Brother Ray's, we're glad to see you here. He's the pastor of Allentown. And Brother Davis, always good to see you. And appreciate the, appreciate the Lord. Let's open up with some prayer and ask the Lord to help us tonight. And we're believing it in the name of Jesus. God, we're just asking you, Lord, that you pour out your spirit, Lord. Oh, God, we want you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, what a treat we have tonight. All right. Let's sing that song. Mm. All right. Well, there's going to be revival in the land. There's going to be revival in the land. To the south, the east, and the west. There's going to be a revival in the land. Well, there's going to be a revival in the land. healing. Well, there's going to be healing in the land. Well, there's going to be healing in the land. From the north, from the east and the west, there's going to be healing in the land. Come on. Well, there's We're going to do three, page 311. I'll fly away. How many is ready to meet the Lord, huh? Mm, I'm glad morning when this life is over. I'll fly away.
going to have our ushers to come and uh, take up an offering while they play it again. We're going to play it again, and, and let's give as giving unto the Lord, and then we're going to turn the praise team loose. This is just a preparatory. Amen. Come on, let's let's give as giving unto the Lord. Well, I
this is about old or young, it doesn't matter. God can help you tonight. Hallelujah. Yes. Stomp your feet. Stomp your feet. Aren't you glad for the presence and power of God? Uh, some of you look like I ain't seen this. It's just you ain't seen it in, you know, 10 years or whatever. Amen. What I believe in the old time, Holy Ghost outpouring. Hallelujah. That's what we want. That's what we need. Oh, God. If we've ever needed it in Pentecost, we need it. I say, Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again. Hallelujah. Oh, God, do it again. Do it again. Hallelujah. Do it again. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, you can return to your seats if you want. And, uh, of course, Sister Haley won't mind if you stand up right here and help her preach. Uh, appreciate and give honor to each one tonight. Appreciate the Lord. Thank you so much. Once again, thank you to all of our visitors. We're so glad you're here. Some of you are not visitors. You're home folk now to me. And uh, we're, we're glad you're here, each and every one of you. And I want us to pray as Sister Haley comes, and I want her to deliver whatever it is that the Lord has given you. says, you have liberty. And uh, I just want you to take your liberty, all right? 
How many is going to pray for her? Amen. I'm going to pray for her. Let's extend your hand right now. As she comes, Father, we're asking you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, I ask you, Lord, that you touch her. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is a mighty presence that I feel in here tonight, and I just want to continue to entertain that same presence. Um, Y'all can go ahead and be seated. Um, I would like to thank Brother Hogson for this opportunity and the leadership that he's given me in this short time. Um, And I would also like to give glory to God because I don't know where I would be without him and his presence living inside of me because he has changed things that I didn't even think that he could change, that I didn't even know was wrong with me. But he molded me and he made me into the person that I am today. And I guess you can stand for the reading of the word. Um, I should have kept y'all standing. So we'll be reading out of John 6, verses 1 through 13. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain And there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw great company come come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread, that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may eat, take a little, One of his disciples, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise, the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. You may be seated. So this is an awesome miracle that Jesus performs, um, but honestly, I think that's just the surface of it. Yeah, he fed 5,000. Yeah, you know, he provided where there was extra left over. But I feel like there is something more to this story then that's what's at the surface. When I was reading this probably a few weeks ago, um, verse 12 stuck out to me. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. These fragments, they were broken pieces. They were the leftovers. They were what was remaining. And this shows me that what was left over mattered to Jesus. And I believe that God gave me this word because I feel like there's some broken pieces here. There are some broken people here who think that they have gone through too much to be used by the kingdom of God, to even matter to God, to even be loved by God. You think you're broken and unfixable, but I'm going to tell you tonight, God has given me a word that he is not finished with you yet. Yeah. Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. God sees your brokenness, and he's reaching for you tonight. You see, I think there's a significance in the fact that the sun, the moon, the stars, the entire universe, birds, beasts, they were all created within that seven days, and God said that they were done. But also in Genesis, God creates man, and he makes the the man out of the dust. He created a living person, and breathe life into his nostrils. But have you ever wondered why God chose dirt? Why didn't he choose something? If he loves us so much, why didn't he choose something like diamonds or jewels, anything like that? But he chose dirt because it's malleable. It's easy to form. He's continuing to work on us, and he desires to continually mold us. How much does that show that God loves us enough that he creates things like the universe, vast things, and says, I'm done, I'm done with those things, But then he continually works on us. He says, I'm going to continually work on you. In Jeremiah, 
18, God gives Jeremiah a prophetic word to give to Judah, that he has the authority to change their destiny. Jeremiah 18, verses 2 through 6, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he had made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, vessel as, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in mine. Marred. That means spoiled. It means broken. It means destroyed. It means scuffed up. There, it's been through some stuff. It's, it has some blemishes. This clay, ashamed. This clay has been through some things. But it says that God chose to make it again. And why? Why did he want to make it again? Because he intends to use it. God wants to use you despite what has happened to you. No matter what anybody has done to you, whatever you've been through, whatever you've done, whatever you think is useless, that you have no purpose left, God loves those leftovers, your leftovers, and God wants to make you again. And I believe there's some people here that the enemy's been following you a long, long time. There's some people here, it's been since you were younger, that he's been trying to hinder you and put stumbling blocks in front of your path, trying to prevent you from reaching your purpose because he knows that you have one. Perhaps even some things that even followed you into your adulthood, I don't know. But one thing I know is that God is not finished with you yet. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose his purpose. You have a purpose, and God is not done with you yet. It says all things, everything works together for the good. Somebody say, God's not done working with me yet. It says nothing, nothing, nothing may be lost. God is reaching tonight. Whatever you think is left over, he's able to use. Whatever you think is broken, he is able to use, and he's able to mend that. Um, I'm just going to be transparent here because I feel like that's what God wants us to do tonight. Um, A little backstory: I didn't grow up in church. Um, I come from a very abusive household. Thankfully, um, nobody ever laid their hands on me. That was God's protection, I believe. But I grew up around abuse of my mom, and I was always afraid of my mom's life. My dad was an alcoholic. My mom was an alcoholic, and... Um, just very vivid memories stick out to me, but one in particular was, um, I was about four years old, maybe five, and they were arguing as usual, didn't think anything of it really, of course I was scared, Um, but my dad takes a little too far, and he was actually cooking on the stove, and he takes an entire pot of food and just throws the entire thing at my mom. She had second-degree burns and bruises all over her body for weeks. And at that moment, I blamed myself. It was a pivotal point for me. For so many years, I held that against myself. I blamed myself for stuff that didn't even involve me. And that's what the enemy does. He tries to put blame on us that isn't even there. I was so broken. I got into self-harm. I was so depressed. I was so far from God. I didn't want anything to do with him. I had bitterness. I didn't even want to believe there was a God. And I believe that there are some things in my life that I know have been able to help me grow and to strengthen me and to encourage me. But there are some things that I don't have rhyme or reason for. I don't know why they happened. And I can't explain why. But I know through all of it, It can be used to demonstrate his power and his glory. I would not be here today if it was not for God mending my brokenness that I had. And he's still working on me. Through my brokenness, he was able to give me a purpose. Philippians 1, 6. Being confident of this very thing, 
that he which begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God is not done with you yet. And I'll let you all in on a little secret. Um, you don't know the connection between the clay and the broken bread? The broken bread wasn't just crumbs. It was actually broken pieces of bread that wasn't actually eaten. The thing about them, the connection was that they both went through the master's hands. And what that tells me is that nothing that passes through the master's hands will be lost. That shows me it's okay to be broken. It's okay if I'm broken. It's okay because I'm passing through the master's hands. He is with me and he is with you. God is with me and he is with you. He is not finished with me yet and he's not finished with you yet. Nothing is going to be lost. Psalms 51, 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, that will not despise. See, God desires the broken to come to him, and he desires people with that brokenness to open up. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He will make sure that nothing is lost. He will restore everything that you've lost. There is a purpose in it all. God is not finished with you yet. Psalms 51, verse 8 says, Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. And when I read this, I was like, why are broken bones rejoicing? Why? See, in this moment, David was just so distraught by the things that he had done, the things, you know, that he even went through, that he literally felt physically as if his bones were broken. Have you ever been emotionally hurt so bad that you just feel it physically? But why were they rejoicing? It's because David understood that God was not finished with him yet. God is going to complete the word and work that he promised just like he did in David's life and yours. Nothing that you have had to endure will be wasted because he can turn it around for his glory and his good. Psalms 34, 18, I'll read it again. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, save as such as be of a contrite spirit. And thankfully, we don't have to stay broken. I won't be too much longer. It states in Jeremiah that he made the clay over. He made it again. God is a healer, and he's able to heal your brokenness. Exodus fifteen twenty six, And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and he will give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded, wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. You see, I believe there's some dark, deep things in this room that nobody knows about that you've never told any about. It's just hurtful to even think about it. They haunt you at night. But let Jesus in because he's a comforter and a counselor. He's the best counselor, and he wants to form you again because he's not finished with you yet. You need to be vulnerable because he is a gentleman, and he's not like the people that hurt you. He keeps his promises. He is not a man that he should lie. His ways are not like ours. He keeps every promise that he has made, and one of those promises is that he will complete it. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I'm coming to a close. If y'all would just stand. You might wonder how. You know, I've tried counseling. I've tried medicine. Nothing's working. Nothing's working. I'm done trying. But I know an ultimate counselor. And I know through his spirit, the Holy Ghost is a gift and a promise to everyone. If you don't have the Holy Ghost in this place, it is a gift to us all. And how you receive that is through one, faith. First, believing that God is and that he will fill you with that. Second is repentance, turning away from 
the things that you have done in the past and saying, God, I'm sorry. You have to turn away from those, though. Acts 3.19, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Third, pray out loud. Psalms 81 verse 10, I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. And you might say, oh, I already have the Holy Ghost. I don't need it. But we do need a renewing. We need a renewing every single day. And uh, as the music will come, um, I would just like to open up these altars to whoever feels a brokenness and is tired of it, who wants to give it to God. Because I know I've had brokenness in the past, and if it was not for his mercy and his love, that I would not be where I am today. Honestly, I don't know if I would be pregnant or dead, but it's through his blood that I am able to overcome those things. I just want to read a verse one more time. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Like I said, you need to be vulnerable because he's not going to push you to do anything. He's a gentleman, he's not going to force you like what you've been through before. He's a whole new person and he's willing to mend you in those things. You just got to open up your heart and your mind to his spirit.
stop getting off the wheel. Oh, God, mold us.
Aren't you glad the Lord's still working on you? Amen. I'm glad he's still working on me. He restores. Restoreth my soul. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Oh, yes, God, hallelujah. Oh, Hear the word of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Break through the chain. Oh, God. 
The Spirit of God is continuing to minister to folks. And listen, that's it. Aren't you glad that the, for the for His Spirit? Aren't you glad for His working of His power? I'm glad. Oh God, we need His Spirit every. In, in 2021, we need a spirit. In 2022, we need a spirit. We need his spirit. This is the way. There, there's, listen, there ain't no amount of blue lights and stuff. That, that, listen, we need the spirit of the living God. I'm not, against, I'm not against other things, but this will draw individuals as, we, as we're changed by the power of the living God. I heard the Holy Ghost say in 1980, about 1988, the Spirit of the Lord spoke out of Jeremiah, that same passage, Sister Haley, and he said, I'm molding you and I'm making you. And then we're forgetting, he said, but you keep getting off the wheel. Let's stay on the wheel. Hallelujah. God's got more in store. Thank you, Sister Haley. I don't know where you're at, but th thank you, Sister Haley, for that word. Let's continue to believe God. Come on, let's stand to our feet. You that are still praying, continue to pray. Let's lift our hands one more time. Let's thank Him for His Word. Thank Him for speaking to us tonight. Hallelujah. This is the norm. Father, we thank You, Lord God. We honor You, Jesus. We thank You for revival. We thank You for revival fires that burn on the inside, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God. We're an imperfect people, but we're believing in you as a perfect God. Lord, I'm asking you, O oh God, continue to sweep through uh, this place, Lord, and this city, God, I pray. Let your revival fire burn. Hallelujah. Let folks drive by and see the Shekinah glory hovering over our roof. Amen. Lord, let them see the like as a fire as it sits upon this place. And I'm asking and believing it in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you is my prayer. You that are praying, continue to pray. Shake hands, be friendly, hug necks, and we'll see you tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Amen. You are dispensed.